everybody. Welcome back. 25 North Podcast. This is Jason. I'm your GM tonight. We got the crew. What's going on, everybody? Hello! Hi! Hello, world. Hello, <laughs> world, indeed. So what's going on? How are things? <laughs> How you doing? Oh, you know. Oh, it's a, a sunny Sunday afternoon. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, I imagine it's spicy down in Texas. Oh, yeah, it's over 100 right now. Yup. We that both got spicy. burned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went to a buddy's w- place. What's it doing in the Midwest? Uh, bu- down raining. By, yeah, down by me, it's raining. Um, mm-hmm. It is currently <gasps> 66 degrees and raining. Trade, 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 Yeah, send please. some of that down no, to us, please. No, absolutely not. Please. No, oh, thank you. On. Hard like pass. The rain. Hard Just pass. The rain. <laughs> I will give you this Guardian Amiibo that's on my desk. That's Hard a pass. really cool one. I- I'm sitting at a nice 89.6 right now. Converted that for all of uh, all of you. Oh yeah, for our Canadian audience, what what am I at here? Let's see here. Uh, uh, you're at like 18, I believe. Um, our folks further to the south are sitting around 37, 38, and I'm sitting at like 31, 32. I love this weather report that we're getting from Corey. <laughs> like it's the, the mid morning news, and it's like, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, would you look over here? It's a bunch of bullshit happening over in Texas. My God, so spicy. <laughs> Will Don't it ever rain? Will <laughs> it rain? Will there be more fires that happen in the middle of fucking nowhere? Who knows? You know, we we start talking about the weather, and Sarah's not with us today. I say, yeah, this is Miss Sarah. Oh yeah. no, love you, Sarah. Hey Sarah, you're pretty neat. Reporting the weather to people that that actually live <laughs> yeah. in the area. Yeah, yo, we we had a tornado touchdown probably about five, ten miles away from where I live on Friday. So oh! cool. That's what Sarah was doing on Friday. Yeah. I'm, gu- I'm guessing. I, I haven't confirmed so, yeah. that, but yeah. So. Made it sound like she was the one that causes the tornado when you <laughs> no, said that. No, that's correct. Yeah. What yeah. else do meteorologists do? They yeah. look they and to, they cackle. They need to their create. Hands. They need to create weather to report on weather with um mm-hmm. with her striped socks and her <laughs> ruby slippers and dropping houses and. <laughs> I'll get you, my footies. <laughs> <laughs> and your podcast too. And flying monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Sad thing is, I think I could, he- in my mind, I could hear her say that whole sentence to me. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, but yeah, we were talking about Chinese food. I don't know how <laughs> we're going to transition from from that to Chinese food. Oh, uh, we just did. You did. I mean, you did it, Jason. Yeah. Um, we were. This is a we were... flawless production. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we had planned to talk about Chinese food. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, what's your go-to Chinese like Chinese takeout order? General Tso's chicken. Okay. He, how do you order it? Uh, <laughs> just standard? <laughs> yeah, just standard uh, okay. fried rice on the side. Ooh. The, the uh, Chinese place that's over by us isn't uh, exactly like fully kitted out. But I... Yeah. Uh, if it's not Chinese food, uh, I'm a big fan of pad thai. Ooh, that's good stuff, too. That's fair. I can that's actually fair. smell fried rice cooking right now. I think that's oh. what's for dinner for Ooh. everyone except me. You know, oh. the rest of the family who's not recording. <laughs> uh, Lucky them. You're right? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Just be up here hungry. I'm a big fan. I do the, the ginger beef as a requirement. I like it spicy. I usually tell them that I want it. Uh, how spicy they'd make it if somebody was really rude to them in the restaurant. Um, <laughs> so I've had it varying degrees of face melting, and that's always really good. Uh, but I like to complement that with a sweet and sour pork generally, which Ooh. is hard because I'm allergic, like super allergic to pineapple. Uh, really? So I actually ordered Chinese food last night and subbed out the sweet and sour pork because I know the place that we were ordering from does it with a pineapple base. Uh, and got General Tao's chicken. So, and it was quite good. And then, yeah, we skipped the rice. We make that ourselves. So, generally, I'll just make my own rice and uh, gives me the option to throw on like a, you know, a beef and broccoli or a chicken and broccoli. Uh, what is it? My, I guess my go to when it comes to Chinese food is I like to do a nice orange chicken. 
I like orange chicken a lot. But the problem is, is that I don't, I don't like spicy food all the time. I know it's criminal, right? But like, uh, I have the spice wrap between us too. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, here's the thing. It is certain things I want spicy compared to other stuff. My Chinese food, I don't want it spicy all the time. There are exceptions. Uh, I do like the Szechuan beef that we get from some places. A little bit spicier. Because uh, I did get mine like a nice spice level. It was delicious. Uh, same thing with, I guess, my orange chicken. Sometimes. It just depends from where I'm getting it from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we're doing pad thai, because Jackson and I do pad thai all the time together, I get beef drunken noodles, and it is a delicious treat every time. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, uh, Rachel? Now I want more Chinese food. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I get the noodles <laughs> of various types. The lo mein. Lo mein, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and pad thai, if it's Thai food. Nice. Other noodle things. Mm-hmm. Stick with the noodles. Stick with the noodles. The noodles are pretty good. Yeah. I like getting brown rice most of the time, though, just because I'm trying to be a little bit better with myself, and I'll do brown rice if I'm able to. If I can have sushi grade rice for whatever reason, if the restaurant sells it, I'm going to take it, though. Yeah. I'm, um, I like Mongolian beef. Ooh. I like, um, garlic beef. Yeah, those are good, too. Those are usually my go-tos. If it's a new place, I generally order the sesame chicken because you really can't fuck up sesame chicken. It's a good measurement of, hey, how good is this place, really? That's how I handle the ginger beef myself, is it's like a, it's my my grading tool. Yeah. I've had everywhere from what felt like the best to down to the worst. Yeah, litmus test. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, sesame chicken's my litmus test, and I usually order it extra spicy, just because it's sesame chicken. And if it's not extra spicy, yeah. I always love it though, because whenever I try and go to a place and order like the super spicy food, the waitress takes a look at me, or the waiter takes a look at me, you're like, "You sure?" I'm like, "I know, I know what I'm signing up for." <laughs> Lay it on you- me. <laughs> You eat, you handle spicy food way better than me sometimes, and it's very impressive, or most of the time, actually, because I don't get, like I said, I don't normally consume spicy. If it's not uh, spicy, is it really food? <laughs> all right. It's better food. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. I like my bowel movement afterwards to be nice, so, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm not psychotic. <laughs> no. It, it, everybody, with- everybody considers nice differently, I guess. Uh, I guess, yeah. It's what you call with, worth um, it. With my name, with my name, when I order, when I DoorDash extra spicy or extra hot, I'm sure they look at my last name. They're like, this is just a Minnesota white boy. Let's make it Minnesota spicy, which is ketchup. Oh, that's but sad, if, though. But if I go into a restaurant and they see me, they're like, oh, this boy's Make Cor- him suffer. This boy's <laughs> Korean. He, he can handle the spice. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really have to impress the fact that it's like punish the tourist hot that I'm looking for. Punish um, the tourist. It's yeah, that one uh, receipt from that one restaurant they took a picture of. It's an extra spicy, extra spicy, extra spicy special note. Make him extra note. Wish that he was never born. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty close. That. To, it's pretty close to what I'm looking for. Not quite, but pretty close. I've been there once or twice, though. But you know who wishes they weren't born? Timothy. <laughs> no, so far, so far, it's Zaba who's taking the most damage in this fight. The Yom uh, that we're fighting. Can we, can we? Can we just Thanos snap them out of existence? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all are fighting some Yom Himbe's, and after getting Zaba back up on his feet, begrudgingly, I need to remind you, begrudgingly, um, you make it back to the Clean Lines Surveying Shop. And while Alasha hung outside of the shop, you know, making sure that nobody goes in, y'all went into the shop to try to figure out what the hell was going on with her maps. Well, Timothy went in and quickly noted that 
this is this place is infected by a couple of couple of entities and lo and behold these two entities turn out to be yam him yam hibdis who which are aberrations from the ethereal realm and they quickly pop right out and start shellacking you you all to the ground um just slapping you all with some tendrils flinging ink blinding <laughs> you and dredging up some really powerful sorrowful memories along the way mm-hmm. now we didn't get through the fight last time we got what round is this we're at the top of round five this one is a is going to basically be a war of attrition because every time these yam hibdis dredge up sorrow they restore hit points yeah and um well, Timothy did find out some, did manage to recall some knowledge on these bad boys, but not not quite everything. So, um, y'all, y'all know some stuff, but yeah, so I'll leave it at that. And that is where we are going to pick it up at the top of round five. And I will unpause this game and we're going to get right into it with Zaba Otrav. Your turn is up. It is. It is. And now, I am. Oh, real angry. quick reminder. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but real quick reminder for our listeners how the battlefield looks. We have to the north, um, two Yam Hibdis. Directly to the southeast of the first one is Zaba. Directly south of the second one, about five feet away. Five, five feet to the east of ten feet to the east of Zaba is Vesuviak. Now Vesuviak is or directly southeast kitty corner to Vesuviak is Timothy Bano, and ten feet behind Zaba is Sil. All right, sorry, Corey. Just wanted to remind our listeners. No, no, all good. All right, so Zaba is is angry. Oh yeah, you're um, raging. That's right. And in mm-hmm. hot pursuit, yeah, the the qualifications for rage were met, uh, and Saba's not dropping it until he has to at this point. Um, so thanks to using his rage ability, he was able to uh, keep up using no escape and stayed right on this Yo- Yom Himdi, and is going to continue lashing out with his his bastard sword two handed. Do it up. Strike number one is an 18 on the die, and that is a hit. I'm honestly a little surprised it's not a critical hit at a total of a 29, but that's yeah, all right. 18 on the die for a 29. Yeah, that wasn't quite. Holy oh, I rolled, oh, rolled big, though. Hot that is 28 up. points of damage with a 12 and a 10 on my D12s. Big arms, big Yikes. dreams. And it takes all of that damage, buddy. Perfect. I'm going to do it oh, again. Oh, th- it wouldn't have mattered if it was a crit. Remember, these things are immune to crits. Oh, they are immune to crits. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And that is on your second, rolling, str- rolling second swing. Rolling with rocks. With, with map. That is still a 19. Plus six. AC 25 is still a hit. Let's go again. Uh, that is 21 points of angry slashing damage. Oh, and he's barely standing. Ah. Uh, Fuck. All right. This one's for the skies. Going fishing. Yep. Ah, big miss with a seven yeah. on the die. Seven on the die is going to be... Uh, seven on the die plus one is an eight. Yep, that's a critical miss. But huge huge damage as you just slash right through this ethereal aberration just swinging wildly and just completely ripping out these because you remember there 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 are these like like floating pieces of ink like drawings of ink that have been like um transmuted off of parchment to form this body and you're just flinging this ink from your sword, and it just kind of flies around the room and lands in puddles, like, as if it was blood. 
He definitely doesn't wipe any from his face. Oh, Does that right. weird amphibian blink, though, where the eyelids come from the sides and clean it off? Oh. <laughs> All right, Vesuviak. You got one bad boy right in front of you. I sure do. Um... I believe for my first action, I'm going to go ahead and... Well, for my first two actions, I'm going to go ahead and cast the Harm spell against it. Ah, smart. Harm against it. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and... Uh, oh, God, buttons. I think that's a fortitude save. Yeah, yeah so, uh, save. so this thing will have to make a fortitude save. The one right in front of you. And you're doing the two action one, or are you doing the one that's almost dead? Because this is ranged. I'm doing the one directly in front of me. Okay. That is a two on the die for a failure. Nice. It's going to take all of that damage. Oh, yeah. I just click the damage button. Correct. All right. Oh, that's, you know, could have been better. Could have been worse. All right. Six on the die. It will take all of it. Hell yes. Um. And what is this? What does your harm look like? Hmm, I haven't thought about that. Okay. Um. I want to say that as uh, Vesuviac channels the harm spell, um, you start to see like flames start to come from the side of his mouth as he's channeling all of his energy into the holy symbol, causing this purple and red uh, flow of fire to just completely engulf the yum hippie in front of him. Yeah, kind of purplish, negative, or it's not called negative now, it's called void energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. And then for my third action, a raise of the shield. <laughs> nice, good call. Get that AC up. All right, so. Yeah. It is your go. We can't finish off the more damaged one, so moving up right next to Zaba and attempting to slash at the almost dead thing. Ooh! Nice. That, yeah. That's a natural 20, but... Yep. No criticals. At least there, it hits. If there, if there was a critical <laughs> effect, it would take it, but... Right. Okay, and... That is a death. Yeah. Yay! Yay. <laughs> One Yam Hibdi goes down. It's going much better than last time. Yes. And then <laughs> I don't believe I've attempted to intimidate these things, so I will look at the other one and glare at it, as Syl does have. Well, these things do speak common. You'll you'll remember. Yeah, but Syl doesn't like to. <laughs> That's right. Glaring is better. So, 18, 18 for a 29. 18 on the die. For a 29 on the will, DC? Yeah. That is a critical success. Ooh. So it is frightened too. This is a much, friend. much better round for you. Or, yeah, yeah. All of us. Round for yeah. everybody so far. And I just jinxed it for Lunar. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, thanks, man. I'm gonna be like, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat shit, it's about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, Sil, you come up and just completely slash the remaining ink from this Yam Hibdi, and then just look right at this one. And it this the one that's standing in front of Asuviak just got like like filled with this void energy so it's already feeling really shitty and then it just saw its buddy and you just look right at this thing and it's just a cold chill if it had a spine it would go right through its spine <laughs> and we go to timothy bono oh is it me oh, i forgot yeah. the one that uh the one that just beefed it was the one that was before me okay so timothy uh Timothy is doing his best to... He's no longer under that effect that he was under with the Yom Hibdi of it, like, going to his mind and stuff like that, but he can't shake the feeling that some things you know in there when it's not supposed to be. Uh, but looks to this Yom Hibdi and he points his wand towards it, and he does another fling magic at the Sukka. Nice. Uh, he... So, the, so yeah. it has to make that reflex save? Yeah, make the reflex save. 
and it's already frightened, so this one's going to be a minus two to their reflex save, so this is huge. 15 on the die, oh. minus two from the frightened. That's still a success, but the, um, but you just roll that level damage. Yeah. Huh. Nine. Yeah, it's nine damage. And it's going to take all of it, because that's that force damage. It goes right through it. Pow, 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 pow. Fuck yeah. Uh... I'm trying to think if Timothy does anything else, because he technically threw his shale starf knife. Uh, I don't think I've got multiple of those. Maybe? No, I only got the one. No. Um. No, I think that's what Timothy does on his turn. He and he does that attack. Yeah. Okay, so you you do have a third action. There's different things you can do with a third action if you don't know exactly what to do. Um, you could just say you're, you're you're right next to the bookcases. Yeah. And I think I'm just gonna move your token. Yeah, okay. you're right. You're right next to the bookcases. There's like a table right to the right to the um, north of you. Um, you could say you're taking cover, which would mean that um, it's just one action to take cover, okay. and that would increase your AC by a set amount. Like if you're if you're if you're gonna take cover behind a wall. I would say that's greater cover. That's going to increase by two. Okay. Um, if you're just like a, if you're standing next to a bookcase or there's like a table in front of you, and you're not you're not actually falling prone, but you're kind of like leaning over, crouching, I would say that's lesser cover. So that's going to boost your AC by one. Okay. So if you wanted to do that, I would say that's a good call. Okay. Uh, I didn't know I could do that. So yeah. thanks for letting me know that. Uh, I think Timothy is taking kind of stock of what's happening, and he, yeah, I think you, no, no, actually, he's too upset at this point to actually take care of himself. What I think he does instead is that he does move up to be right next to Vesuviak, and I think actually is, like, standing on top of, like, the, oh, like, the table that's right in front of him, if he can do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, sure. Uh, all right. And Timothy, I think, is standing up there just so that way Vesuvac is not the only thing that this thing is targeting. Nice. Because okay. he wants to, you know, be there for his buddy. I think, like, his purpose, like, when he gets up there is that he is wanting to make himself look bigger and more scarier to him. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least this Yam Hipti to be like, no, attack me. Don't attack this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's his goal with it. If that Absolutely. makes sense. No, that, that that does make sense. Because this thing is going to go next. And it looks right at Timothy. Hey, what's up? <laughs> and it, it knows it's frightened. Yeah. And But what it's going to do is it's going to plumb your psyche. So once again, it, you can feel that presence as this thing kind of like reaches out into your mind. Mm-hmm. And it will attempt to plumb your psyche to pull up all that sorrow that it knows, because it's done this before. Yeah. It knows you have some really deep-seated trauma and sorrow, and it just tried to rip that up to the surface. So I'm going to need you to make a will save. Please. Please don't. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad, Tim. Tim? Timothy! <laughs> Oh my god, part of the two crew. Yeah, two crew. Hey, how's it going? What's up? And that's oh. stupefied two again, and this thing is going to heal itself for 14. Well, hey, it didn't target Vesuviac, so I'm fine with that. All right. Not at full. It's not at full. Thank so god. Uh, it, it'll it'll heal that 14. Um <sighs> And it can't do this thing again for, okay. <laughs> I'm just pull, I'm just rolling to see how many more rounds it can do this again. Okay. So it does that, and it just kind of like feeds, and you could see that the ink starts to like stretch and fill in the gaps that um, you've pelted with that with your force missiles coming out of your wand, and it says, "We were brought here for a purpose, and we will achieve that purpose." And with its final action, it's going to look right at um, Vesuviac oh, and try to whip that tendril with a two. It's also Yay. part of the two crew. Yeah. 
And that's a critical miss on that too. So we go to top of round six, Zaba Otrov. I, uh, I flip the table directly in front of me while taking a step action. Table flip is flavor. <laughs> Flavor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, I am uh, not feeling like such a good guy. And I am just going to start doing what I do and slash down on this guy twice. All right, so you stepped up. And, oh, my God, 18 on the die again. AC 29 is a crit hit. Here's the so regular damage. All right, so the Yam Hibdi takes that 22 damage from that first slash and takes it all. Perfect, and I will smash it again. Eight on the die is going to be a miss. That Eight on the die a... for 14. Yeah, just not quite getting the second one through. And we go to Vesuviak. Hmm. There was something that it said that Vesuviak's absolutely paying attention to. And it was that they were sent there for a purpose. Um, I think I want to try and see if I can intimidate the Amhibdi to coerce it and uh, tell me why it was sent here. So coercion is... Um, usually you, you, you need to... That takes about a minute to do it. Okay. So we wouldn't be able to do it now, but I will let you... If you want to bring this thing down, um, if you want to bring it down, I will let you basically say that you brought it down to zero, but you're going to keep it alive just so long enough to interrogate it if you wanted to do that. Okay. Yeah, I would like to do that. Uh, then in that case, I believe that the Subiac is just going to go ahead and strike once with his gilded blade, his scimitar. Mm-hmm. Uh, bu- bu- okay. 14 a, on the die for a 23. That's a hit. Hell yes. Uh, let's get that damage out. 9 plus 2 is 11. Okay. And then... I'm not really seeing anything else that would be super beneficial to me at the exact moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Second burst, same as the first. We're doing it again. Okay. Ooh, five on the die, plus nine is a 14. That's not going to do it. Okay. Well, it didn't... Some crafty it ink. Didn't, it didn't put in that, uh, the, uh, the penalty. Okay, that's weird. I think I clicked something wrong. Uh, final action, raise the shield. <laughs> Smart. All right, Syl, you're up. Yes, I will step up next to Zaba again, skirting around this now overturn table uh, to get into a flank with Timothy and strike. Oh, thank you. At eight on the die is plus eleven. Is a nineteen? That's yeah. a hit. Good enough. Oops, it's got the extra d6 because of the flank. Okay, so I will ignore that. So that's we're going to ignore three of that. So it's going to take 11 damage. Nice. Sounds good. Then I will strike again. 17 on the die. Yo! Plus seven's a 24. That's another hit. Yeah. Again, you'll have to just ignore the d6 since it's going in there automatically. So we'll take four off of that, and that's going to be nine damage to the Yam Hibdi. Yeah. Hmm. Chipping, Chipping away. Chipping away. This thing's not looking great. Timothy. Yeah, okay. So I'm stupefied too. So, all right. Timothy definitely did clock that this thing said that it was here for a reason. And that, like, despite, like, what's happening in his head and just seeing things that should necessarily be drowned out with liquor uh, coming up to the surface. He, I think he like steals himself for a moment as he's on top of this table and he looks to this, uh, the Yamhibdi. He's gonna try to cast Daze. Okay. Because I saw that it's non-lethal and I wanna do it. Oh shit, I accidentally pressed the button. Well, oops. Oh 
fuck, right. that's right! I'm stupefied, meaning that I can't- oh. So you have to beat a DC. And, um, yeah, you just rolled a nap one. Yeah. So your days, you, so you cast days, but as soon as it comes out of your hand, it just fizzles. Timothy, I think, actually looks concerned for, like, a second. He's like, that, uh, that's not supposed to happen. Okay, uh, fuck. <laughs> I kind of want to unarm attack it, because I don't really have a star knife. But just punch <laughs> Timothy punches ink. Because I don't think I have anything else that really is one action that I could do at this moment in time. You could punch it, yeah. I'm going to punch the ink. move away as well. Uh, there is move away, but personally, I don't think Timothy wants to move away from this well, thing. Yeah, and you have the personal antithesis, so you get that bonus on your unarmed strikes as well. Yeah, screw it. I'm doing it. Uh, let me make sure I've targeted it. Yes. There we go. I'm rolling to hit. Seven. Well, beats. Oh, it's not. It's not awful. It's a miss, but it's not awful. Yeah. That was a seven plus seven is a fourteen. Yeah. So it's a miss, but not. Not terrible. Would the flanking bonus make any difference? Oh, these things can't be flanked. Oh, okay. Oh, all right then. What? I get that. <laughs> you guys even noted the fact that it has eyes everywhere. Oh, in your description. Yeah, that's right. With how it was there, drawn up. We called them star things. There's yes. no, there's no facing in Pathfinder? Question mark. <laughs> well, not with these guys. Uh, There's yeah. eyes everywhere. You guys, you guys specifically called that out in your description. Uh. <laughs> I tried. It's all right. <laughs> well, this thing. Um, Sag. All right, this thing. What's it gonna do? It doesn't like the fact that um, Zaba was um, just beefing, beefing him with the, those huge, huge swings. So it's going to spend one action to attempt to fling ink at Zaba. Oh. Dodge it, man. It's not good for you. So, yeah. Make that reflex save, bud. I believe in you. It's a nine on the die. That's a success. So you're unaffected. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to attempt to move away, but um, this thing's an idiot. Oh, yeah. We all get to fucking attack it. No, no, no. Zaba can just move. I'm just gonna move with it, yeah. Because he's a because he has a special my reaction. Feet. And it was his yeah, buddy. It, it happened to his buddy, not him. So yeah. he so, yeah, he I, didn't re- wasn't paying attention. He triggers no escape. Yep. And he's just like, oh shit. <laughs> All right. Well, then he's just going to attempt to slash at you. And Flick Inc. does not have the attack trait, so he gets to use his full bonus. Critical hit on Zaba. Sounds about right. Four. A four and the one. 18. So not, not even what Zaba does on a regular swing. <laughs> no. Yikes. Oh, man. He took my temporary hit points from when I started raging. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, woe is me. Right. Those were right. special to me. Round, top of round seven. Zaba, you are up. So this thing. Cool. For the audience, this thing tried to walk away, and it is um, about 10 feet north of Sill, and Zaba just followed it. Would Zaba still be stupefied, by the way? Because there's been two uh, now, rounds. Now, yeah. Zaba's gone. now Zaba's stupefaction is gone. Yeah. That, not that he really cares. He doesn't cast spells. Uh, no, he doesn't. There's no real difference to me. I need to kill Ghost. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to finish the job and then see how I'm feeling. Well, six Ooh, on the die plus strength. 11 is going to be a miss. The second? Oh, Seven no. on the die plus six is going to be a miss. Hmm. Fishing for that crit? I think so. I think that's the choice. Yep, we're going to go for it. Oh, I'm gambling, man. Oh, come on. That was on the 18. And it rolled over to the four. So that's a big old critical miss. Uh... So I miss with all three strikes, unfortunately. Um, And I think with that, Zaba, very angry, uh, will free action drop his bastard sword. Okay. (laughs) It's like, go to to weapon jail. Go to to jail. 
You've done it. Go to weapon jail. Vesuviak, you're up. Okay, um... Let's see... How long is that stupefy on Timothy last? I think... I think it's one more turn after this one. Yep. I've been keeping track. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can cast, uh... Restoration on Timothy to get rid of the stupefied condition. Um, the casting time is one minute for restoration. So Never have, this mind. This is a this is an out of combat spell. <laughs> Never mind. Then in that case, uh, I think Vesuviax is going to keep the pressure up on uh, on this thing as well. So he's going to move twenty feet to get next to it here, and he's going to do one strike with his gilded blade, so he's standing uh, to the right of it, not quite flanking with uh, Zaba. And let's see how the weapon attack works. Ten. Ah, oh, man. Oh. 19's a miss. I had to have missed that by like a miss. one. It's no longer frightened, so 19's a miss. Alright. Uh, raise shield. <laughs> Alright. The safe final action. <laughs> it's a great one if you have a shield. Yeah. So absolutely a great one. And the cool thing is everybody can have a shield if they want. And even a wizard can have a shield if they want. All right, Syl, you are up. Yeah, even though you say flanking doesn't matter, so we'll move up past Vesuviak to be between um, between this thing and the door. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's you know, a smart move. Since it's trying to run away. And strike at it, so hopefully none of this matters. 16. Yeah. Uh, that's a hit. 27. Yay. And mostly just so that you have to keep... Snake eyes. Oh, it's not there. Six damage. Still yep. alive. Okay. Again. 13 plus 7 to 20. That's a hit. Meets beats. Yay. Not snake eyes. Eight damage. Yeah. Oh, it's still standing. <laughs> Mm, Barely. God. Mr. Bono. Timothy can do it. Mr. Okay. Bo- so, Timothy... Oh, God. Um, you know what? Timothy's going to fling magic again. And I think... How bad does this look? How oh, bad does this dude look, by the way? Very. Okay. Very. When he is flinging his magic, he is purposely going to try to see if he can do. I don't think he, I can actually specify non-lethal. No, because huh? you're not you're not making an attack roll. Mm, you're right. You Fuck, can go up I and could, punch it. I could, I could try to cast daze again. <laughs> you're you're, you could. I could. No, I'm not going to. Okay, you know what? Timothy's going to actually get up from his spot. Uh, give me a second. Here. He is going to move from his spot. He's gonna actually grab his weapon as well too from the ground. So that'll be pick... that'll be a, an entire action to grab it. Okay. So then, oh, sorry, so, I'm trying so to you, move. So you're gonna pick up you're gonna pick up your weapon for one yeah. action. You're gonna yes. move for your second. And then for my third action, I punch I punch ink. Okay. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> but Timothy would do this. That's what I'm playing, and that's mm-hmm. right now. Yep. A one on the die. So you remember when you said we were all ink. rolling really well? Remember when you said that? You have cursed me. You do have a hero point if you want. I, uh, Or do you want to save it? We don't refresh for another three episodes. I'm going to save it. Okay. Yeah, that your, your odds can... of punching ink aren't, aren't the best. Yeah, I think it's just personally Timothy's frustrated this thing got into his head. Oh... Uh, and mm-hmm. it doesn't want it saying whatever the hell it saw in there. Right, this thing's gonna step for one action, the Yam Hibdi. And he's and he says, No, 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 I was brought here. I was brought here. You'll never take me alive, see? And it's going to whip at Cell because you're the only one that's done any damage to it. The la- last turn. Mm-hmm. Last turn. Short memory. <laughs> really short memory. And it's going to miss. And for its third and final That's action, going to attempt to whip at Syl again. And 16 on the die is a hit for... 
Oh, max damage. 16 damage. Alright. With that reach. Alright, and that is its turn. And Zaba's gonna kill it. <clears throat> yes, yeah, Zaba's going to kill it. I, uh... We'll use an action to reach one of my large webbed hands back into kind of the back of my suit and rummage around inside my back itself uh, and draw out a massive hammer um, that the head kind of detaches from and swing at this thing twice with the zuggle hammer and see how it goes. The zuggle hammer, that's right. 12 plus 11, 23 is a hit. 14. 14. That is bludgeoning. How do you describe the final hit? Uh, it's just a, a top down outward smushing of ink, like a Gallaghering. I don't imagine anybody within the 10 foot you know radius gets away unscathed from coverage. Mm hmm. Um, All right. Yeah. I immediately bring my hammer over and uh, just smash this chair to the south of me to shit with it with my second swing. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and you fall out of rage afterwards. Uh, yes, Vesuviak. Uh, yes. Vesuviak. Um, just for role-playing purposes, uh, make me a religion check super quick just okay. to see if you can if you can get w one... Um, well, you, actually, you were doing, going to do coercion. Well, doesn't matter. That was a natural one. So just as you're like, oh, hold on, hold on. I want to talk to this thing. And nope. All right. And yeah, you, before you were trying, before this thing disapparates back into the ethereal realm, um, you try to talk to the, and nope, you just don't. It, <laughs> sorry, bud. All right, now you're gonna, all right. <laughs> <sighs> And uh, your stupefied goes away, Lunar. Thanks, so does your antithesis. Yeah. Um, the guidance goes, immunity goes away. I get that's only an hour. So. All right. I, uh, I am sorry. I lose a bit of control. And I was bad guy. I destroyed table. I destroyed chairs. <laughs> there you go. So there's your healing. <laughs> I just. That's uh, my healing. That was yours. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, just, I just need a couple a minutes week. to cool down. Uh, uh, just that's that's fine. We can blame it on the monsters. Oh no, you don't have to, it was you know, it was, say it was me. you. These are actions of Zaba. I just go take a little sit down. You're you're fine. And Timothy, I think, like shakily, just like grabs out uh, his like thing of rum just to like take a sip and like shakes his head. And just trying to get centered back. Uh, he's gonna go look around the room and try to figure out if this was like the only thing here, or if there's anything else in here. Wait, Timothy, were those more ghost uh, things, like in the other place? Uh, sorry. <laughs> G give give me a second. Uh, I wasn't expecting visitors in my mind. Oh, were they in your brain too? Oh, cool. So I wasn't alone on that. Real fun, right? <laughs> I think uh, Vesuviak, while everybody's uh, going around and gathering things, I think he is going to look over to Zaba and he's going to sigh softly to himself, walk over, pick up the trident, pick up the bastard sword, and he's going to head over to Zaba and just lay them on the ground next to him. Uh, thank you. I would have grabbed in a few minutes, just, you know, deep breaths. Do you need healing? No, I am I am all good. Thank you, though. I think Vesuviak hesitates a moment uh, before trying to step away and looks back and goes, I do truly believe that you are trying to be a good guy. Don't blame yourself so much for these. They, uh... They attacked us first. They wanted us dead. Self-defense is... Not an evil action. Yeah, you know, they, 
Mm-hmm. They stay in the bookcase and not hurt little Timothy, and I would have left them alone, but, uh... Why does everyone keep calling me little? I am, uh... Just one. I'm like 11 foot 6. It's I mean, every... that's understandable, but everyone Sin else... is little as well, but they are boss, so... They uh... get, uh, nomenclature of importance. Ah, uh, got it. Okay. Yeah, sure. Fuck it. Fuck it, right? <laughs> <laughs> For what it's so, worth, I've not called you Little Timothy. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's Someone just, in this party. Just Saba. Yeah, that's fair. So, um, you said you were trying to look through some stuff. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna see if this was like the only spirit here, or for whatever reason, if there's anything else. Yeah. Like that would have, that can all potentially mess up our whole day again. <laughs> so yeah, you you can you can spend some time looking here yeah. and. The, yeah, this there's there's no other sort of ethereal aberrations or spirits or anything else in the room. Um, but is anybody searching? Sill's gonna go out and talk to the to Alasha. Okay. Yeah. Oh, while Sill's doing that, is um, whoever wants to search the room can go yeah. ahead and make me some. Just pers- some secret perception checks. Perception checks? Secret perception checks? Oh boy! Uh, perception. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Uh, blind GM. We be searching. Okay. Yeah, so you can, you search through the, the workroom and you don't really find anything of real note. Um, you can examine. There's lots of maps. There's a whole lot of maps. Mm-hmm. And you could... You do see a bunch of maps where the Yamhibdis have actually modified. And you could, and you can it, you can gather them and take them. It's going to take you about an hour to actually comb over the maps that they've modified. Um, if you wanted to inspect those and look at those, it's going to take you about an hour to really comb over those mm-hmm. um, and if you want to do that I have I have some rolls that you can roll me um, but otherwise you're not you don't find anything else in this room I think Timothy wants to do it not because he's interested because he wants to distract himself okay he doesn't want to think about what just happened okay uh, before we get into that let's do a quick super side swipe over to um, Alasha and Sil. Yeah, so so will just walk out and say, uh, we took care of the things. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. What, what was that? What were they? Uh, ink ghosts or something. They ink? seem to be sent here. Ink ghosts? You don't ghosts? happen to, like, be enemies with someone? No, no, I, no, I don't know what, no, I... I, I, not that I know of. Oh, that's good. Maybe they were just here because this is where the maps are. Did you happen to notice, by the way, any, like, common theme of which maps they messed up? No, not really. I just, they've, it seems kind of random, but I haven't really had a whole lot of time to really sit down with them at all. Well, I mean, if you've got time now, you know, since you're the expert, maybe you could help us look them over, figure out if there's something specific they were hiding or... Sure, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, sure, yeah, okay, let's do this. And she just... Whew! And she follows you into into the workroom, and... If she's gonna look, she's she's gonna help Timothy look over those. I'm gonna yeah. give you a a plus five to this. Sick. So roll me either society or perception. Society or perception. Uh, my society or in my per- well, my society is higher than my perception. I'm gonna roll society. Uh, do you want me to do this as a blind roll to you? Um, no, you can do this one public. So then plus a five as well too. That's gonna. Hey, be... that's a success. Yeah. That's a success because of because Alash is there. Thank God, Alasha. So after about an hour of you and Alasha just kind of looking over it, and you know, in between 
some flirty banter, every, you know. No, honestly, Timothy's not flirting, actually. Okay. Right now, at this moment in time, normally he would, but for some odd reason, he seems a lot more stiff and just... Stiff, not huh? Wanting... Stiff, huh? Yes, okay. <laughs> All right. Now everything's a hey, dick calm joke. down over there. Jesus I'm Christ. I'm seeing the littler Timothy <laughs> no, really on my edge. Oh, my God. No, Timothy... <laughs> Timothy just looks just a lot more, I guess, like, not really in his, like, more casual stance. He's a lot more, like, straight edge and just is trying his best to focus on yeah. these maps. Yeah, I get you. So, yeah, so after about um, an hour of combing over the maps, and you gather every single map that the Yam Hibdis have modified, and it's really kind of weird. So all the plat maps have been, and you lay them all out on the table, and after looking at them, you realize, so you and Alasha mm-hmm. put it together and you realize that the lines that they've modified, and you're not sure if they did this intentionally or if it was unbeknownst to them. When you lay it all out, it forms a giant spiral that goes through the town. Where? And it, the spiral all seems to center on the Wave Watcher Inn, which is at the epicenter of that spiral. Yeah, Timothy's looking this over, and he just looks to Lasha. Wave Watcher Inn, what's going on over there? Do you know them, Mighty Chance, or no? Does anybody remember? I mean, he, like, wave, he's talking the... to Lasha to see if he can maybe gain some information from her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before we do that, though, does anybody remember remember the Wave Watcher Inn? Uh, could I do recall knowledge? Um, no, this this <laughs> would be out of character. I don't. If I think Wave Watcher was one of the things we needed to go investigate. Yeah. Exactly. That was the the um, counselor counselor Manino's request. He was the one who. It's one of his favorite restaurants. Yeah, that's right. And it recently closed, and the proprietor was his former lover, and. Yeah. They've gone missing. Uh, hopefully that is not the nice restaurant I went to earlier today. I, I don't think it was. Alasha, what do you know about this place? I don't know a whole lot. I know that it's a fine restaurant. It, the, there's an inn there, and it has this really cool overlook of the Everdeep, the bay. And you can see over the ocean. I know that the proprietor is... Her name is Amdobo. Amdobo. Okay. And um, so she, 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 she's really well known for um, her, her meals. And they kind of complement the... The view of the overlook, so like uh, sea-colored dishes and stews that have been infused with like the salty air and like this really airy creams and foams, like those fancy foams. It's not really my thing, but some people like that stuff. Yeah, sounds a little too rich for my blood, but they say that they say that people haven't seen her for a few days. But what? What about you? Do you know her at all, by any chance, or no? No, and like I said, this is that's not really my that's not really my kind of place. I figured, but you know, I might as well ask, right? No, I no, it's okay. I get. I you're you're more than welcome to ask. Yeah. What I'm concerned about is that there might be a common thread here between the killing intent that we saw at the Academy of Tastes, the Omhibdi that attacked here, and. Now it seems things are pointing to a restaurant that we were asked to check out. Does the spiral also go through the Academy of Taste by any chance? Oh yeah, yeah. The whole the spiral yeah. goes through the whole. It Pretty goes much everything. Yeah, it goes out through the farmlands and goes through basically the whole town. But it, the epicenter seems to be at the Wave Watcher Inn. You said that you were first made aware of the map issues that you were having because of a dispute. Do you know which map specifically was being disputed? Oh, yeah, that was the um, Farmer Joe and Farmer Bob. 
<laughs> yeah, the, they were, they were just arguing over over their their lands, um, and they were came, they came over here, and for some reason, it's it's. I tell you what, they come here once a month to argue over the same property line, and it's it's of it's of no consequence, and. I usually have those plat maps at my ready, and I I just pulled them up, and for some reason, they were different. Like I said, I I know my hand, I know my own hand, and these ones had changed, and I don't know why. But these plot maps aren't a part of this spiral. Yeah, and you can, and afterwards, uh, yeah, like everything, you can tell that, like, every, the way everything's been shifted. Once you put it, piece all the plat maps together of the town, oh, okay. it makes this giant spiral. The way, like, the, all the lines have been shifted, yeah. Okay, gotcha. It's just basically big property blueprints. Interesting. Okay, well, uh,. I guess this tells us where we go next. Yeah. Yeah, so you have the farm, and then you have the the um the Wave Watcher Inn. It was getting late though, wasn't it? Yes, it was getting late. Timothy looks to Lasha and he says, Hey, thank you for the information. We do appreciate it. Uh, Oh Oh yeah, and before you go, come here. Um and she goes over to to one of her drawers, opens it up pulls out this stone and she's like I don't have a whole lot but Uh, I have this and I want you to take it and she puts the stone right in Timothy's hand okay Timothy looks at it like or like he takes like a hold of the stone and I guess looks at it what is what am I holding here king yeah so this Got a cool rock, finally! Hell yeah! (laughs) Every gay's dream! (laughs) Uh, this is going... Zaba will remember this. (laughs) Uh, Cool rock, cool rock. Actually, how about you make me a check real quick? So... Okay. Um, nature? Or what's your lore? You have esoteric Uh, lore. I do have esoteric lore. But what else do you have beyond that? Uh, haunt. Uh, I have... Yeah, that's not gonna work. So, yeah, yeah, just a nature check. Okay. Uh, privately to you? Uh, yeah, it was, this would be a secret one. Okay. Ooh, good roll. So, this is what's called a geomantic stone. Geomantic stone? And you know that geomantic stones are basically, um, you can use them to upgrade the destructive force that can be generated by defensive structures. Oh. Timothy looks at this uh, stone uh, and like, I think actually like, he like kind of like, he's no longer like straight laced looking as he was before. He's kind of settling back to what he was. It, like he's shaking off whatever it was in his head and looks to Alash. It's like, I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This. I mean, yeah. hell, I'm glad I was able to help at your shop. It's, like I said, it's not much, and I really don't know whenever, when I would ever use anything like this, but you're off at running adventures, and I'm afraid that that life is, I'm way beyond <laughs> that life. I'm much too old for that. Uh. So, um, maybe you could make use of it? Uh, we appreciate it. We'll make use of it. Thank you again. Um, and he takes he takes a beat to let out a sigh, and he's like rubbing his like head a little bit because he he is getting tired. Uh, and he looks to still in the rest of the party. Uh, and he says like, "We going back to the boat or what's the plan, gang?" Yeah, might okay. as well sleep in our own quarters. Yeah. All right. Sure. All right. Yes, uh, before we leave, Saba will say to the shopkeeper, he doesn't remember her name, 
Um, you know, I am a good guy, so I feel need to apologize for leaving room look like Legion of Sifkesh walk through and rampage. Um, his apology, but uh, the ghosts are gone. Well, well, thank you. And yeah, you don't need to apologize. My my maps are going to be... I'm going to have to work on fixing them anyways, but at least now I know that they'll be accurate once more. So You also it, will need new chair. It's a small price to pay. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you for being understanding. Have a good night. <laughs> and you all head back to your ship. And you can rest up. So the... I pulled up a map here of Seaview. Yeah. And the Wave Watcher Inn, I'm going to ping it. It's all the way down. So it's at, it's at the top of this plateau. And it's all the way down over here. So for, for, the, uh, for the audience, it's almost to the very, very south part of Seaview. But it's on top of a plateau. Like I said, right at the edge, overlooking the bay. And looking out into the ocean, and your ship would be would be probably somewhere docked along the mm-hmm. harbor. So yeah, so it's up to you. Do you want to go to the inn, or the, do you want to go to the farm? I think I'd want to go to the inn because it's still in town. Oh, I should probably click the rest button, huh? We took the we're like let's let's go into bed now. We're going to the boat. Yep. Yeah. Is that in my hot bar? It's, it's underneath the utility. It's under utility. Yeah. Utility. Ha ha. Look at Zaba. Getting, getting all them hit points back. Yes, 16 big hit points back. Yep, time for Spending me to be curious. Feet. Yeah, I, I did take the, the fast recovery feat at third level, so. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Time for me to double check my spells, see if there's anything I want to swap out. <laughs> Oh, nope, that's not the right button. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, mm. Um, what was reason for going to farm? I cannot remember. I had long day yesterday. <laughs> we all did. Um, I think they were just so let me, arguing. It was part of the property disputes, wasn't it? Let me pull it up here. So, going to the farm, um, Councilor Counselor Pumbus. So this would be the Hugh Jackman counselor. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. He he believes that since the trouble with the bluebell flower harvest, the obvious pl- the obvious place to look is Dardis Farm, which is the largest supplier of bluebell crop. So you all so if y'all remember that there's been a huge issue with the bluebell crop um they're just not able to grow there's something going on with the crop and something is affecting the crop and he's suggesting Dardis farm would be the place to go because it is the largest supplier now um so that was really that was really the the hook there. Heard. What do you think, Sil? You are the boss. I agree with whoever said it. We should go to the restaurant first, the Subiac. Uh, seems more important and closer. Is there this a? Is uh, I could use bite to eat as well. <laughs> I well, mean, the restaurant's considering closed, she's so. missing, yeah, she might not be making you any food, but... Ah, you know I can cook. Kitchen <laughs> is there, I use it. What can uh, you cook? I forgot, I I, I can't remember if Wait. I asked this earlier, uh, but um, is there a temple to Sarenrae in town? Oh, it just was probably a temple to... Yeah. Okay. There's a temple Another... to... Yeah, there's a temple to... Um, the Temple of Many Colors... Okay. Yeah. All right. They worship a lot of gods at those. All right. Don't want to head there yet, but I'm at least going to clock it in the back of my head in case. Most of of the big cities in Galarian have at least one um, temple where there's an altar to all the major deities. And Serenray is 
one of the most popular and biggest deities in Galarian. Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't have any business there yet, but just in case Vesuviak wants to go there, it's good to keep that in mind. Yeah. All right, so you're heading over to the inn. Yeah, let's go check out this inn. Oh, before we leave to the inn, can Zaba help himself to the stock room on the ship and see if he can scrounge up uh, just a minor healing potion to carry on his person? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, there's the... You could probably grab one. Cool. He just likes to have it in case he gets killed by a trap. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> wonder why cool. you'd think that would happen. It's all right. Okay. I got one more elixir of life I'm holding on to, bud. There's one in the party loot, too. A healing potion. Yeah. You could snatch. Yeah, there you go. Just grab the one from the party loot. Right. I forget. I often forget that's what booty is. <laughs> uh, is anything else that's in here being used by people? If it's in the party loot, it's not being used. All right. All right. So <laughs> yeah, you approach the Wave Watcher Inn, and well, right. yeah, it's um, it's pretty, it's pretty large establishment. Huh. Doesn't doesn't look like there's really anybody. I think the soldier training in Vesuviak is going to just make him round the corner, check to see if there's anybody on this side as well. Uh, you want me to go check door? Uh, uh we can check maybe, it together. Maybe I'll sneak ahead. I don't know if any of you are stealthy. stealthy. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, let me go I can, peek uh, in a window. Move with some silence, yeah. but you take this one. There are some windows to the south if we want to peek through that before trying to deal with the door. Okay, so so we'll move up the stairs onto what appears to be a little porch, perhaps. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's kind of a porch that wraps around the front. Um, And Vesuviak, you can see two large bay windows that overlook the the, um, edge of the plateau. Okay, I think Vesuviak is going to try or, or so i see the there's stairs and then there's this railing uh mm-hmm. by the porch and where i'm at how high is that Pop. like five <laughs> feet i don't know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten how how tall would ten stairs be four inches per stair on average so, so 40, 40 inches, inches. So so that's a three little over three feet, feet. Yeah. three and a half feet Okay, uh, so I can still see over. Uh, yeah. I want to do a stealth check as I approach these windows, just in case there is anything inside that could be looking out. All right, make me a secret stealth check. Okay. I am really bad at these, so we'll see how this goes. I have it's a minus two to the roll. <laughs> All right. You swim well, Timothy. So as you, do I swim well? As you yes. attempt to stealth... Um, you completely kick over an oar that was leaning up, and it just it falls over, it knocks over a barrel, and just makes a huge hits a metal bucket that scares a cat. Yeah, <laughs> I scream out, "Fuck!" <laughs> yeah, that was a natural one, bud. Oh boy! <laughs> so that one minus two, Yay. it's a negative yeah. one on the die. Or <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going gonna to reveal that. Just... I'm going to reveal that so you know that I'm not shitting you. <laughs> I like the little confetti that popped up on my screen when that happened. I, I think Vesuviak is just going to shamefully go stand behind Timothy. <laughs> Sil was on their way to sneak around and look at these windows and will <laughs> definitely be glaring at Vesuviak as he comes back around. Vesuviak is just gonna just be staring straight ahead. <laughs> Timothy looks to I him. I did nothing. Like, I did nothing. <laughs> Timothy just looks to him and it's like uh, how'd that self check go, bud? There's a reason why I'm a medic, not a thief. <laughs> you know, yeah. fair enough. Uh, Saba, I guess you might as well just come kick the door down now. I mean... Yeah. All right, you got it. I'll, uh... I'll draw my bastard sword one-handed and my zuggle hammer with the other. Oh, boy. We're just going in with uh, heat. Okay. Okay. Walk up, and I'm just gonna knock on the door. (laughs) Yep. 
You knock on the door. No response. No response. Seems locked. No, it's 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 open. As a matter of fact. There we go. Oh, yes, I just opened door. I'll be right behind him. All right. And what you see in front of you is the common room to the Wave Watcher Inn. It's wide, comfortable. It's paneled in Ooh. lightly colored wood. There's the wood kind of has like this swirling pattern to it. There's a long bar and three round tables that fill this room and to make it really pleasant and cozy. Although there are several chairs that are knocked over. Um, Mm -hmm. There is a wide fireplace that stands between two large bay windows, giving an excellent view of the bay. However, as soon as you open the door, you are greeted by two creatures. Oh. Coming. Oh. Pawing their way right out of the fireplace. What the fuck? As two of these bad boys come trotting out of the fireplace. (gasps) Oh! And they just look right at Zaba. And they start growling as the hair on their shoulders start standing on end as these two hounds on fire just start growling right at Zaba. And that is where we are going to end the episode, folks. They look so friendly in the picture. They look so cute, dude. (laughs) May your party never end, folks. May your party never end. I have learned never to end. never do a stealth check again. <laughs> <laughs>